Welcome, I'm Lizzie Brooks and this is Lizzie Brooks Yoga and Fitness. Today's practice is 15 minutes yummy stretch. This is a great break for if you've been seated a long time or just sedentary or feeling pretty tight. Um, this is really good too if you've done any of the HIT high intensity interval training videos or weights videos and you're just sore. So come on and join me on your mat. Okay, so feel free to prop yourself up on a blanket or a towel if that makes sitting feel a little more comfortable. Bring your hands to your legs, lengthen the spine, take a deep breath in, and sigh that out through the mouth. One more time, in through the nose, and sigh out through the mouth. Just taking a moment to center yourself and create a space for your breathing and coming into a little bit more of what is meaningful, what matters. So sometimes we get a little overwhelmed with surface stuff. So let's find a seat at our depth. Bring your hands together in front of your heart and set any intention for these 15 minutes Whatever it is that you need, maybe it's calm or health or self-love, or maybe you just need a break. <laughs> Set that intention. Inhale fully and shake it off side out. And we're gonna keep shaking the arms. So it's like you've, you've got water on you and you don't have a towel and you need to shake that off. And then take the arms a little higher and keep shaking. This is really good to calm down the nervous system sometimes, release pent up tension, and then reach up and shake off. If you wanna change the direction of your torso, whatever it is, shake that off, arms come down, palms on the thighs, and then we're gonna roll the heart up, shoulders drop back. Exhale, round the spine any amount, drape the head. Inhale, roll the shoulders back, lift the sternum. Exhale, round the spine. You can even pick up the knees and round back a little bit more. One more time like that. Roll up, a little bit of a back bend there. Exhale, rounding, opening behind the heart, underneath the shoulder blades. And then go ahead and come to neutral. From here, we're just going to start to take ourselves into a sway side to side. We're gonna to start to get into our side body and we wanna start really lackadaisically here, but you will feel that your core is working. And then now if you wanna lower one hand and then the other, you can. And if you wanna bring the other arm up and over, other, other arm up and over, feel free to add that on. Just kinda of like seaweed in the ocean. We're allowing our torsos to round to the side rather than taking this straight, okay? Like kind of soldiering, trying to get into that waistline a little bit more, down to the side of the hip. And one more time, and come all the way up. Roll the shoulders back and down a few times. Now interlace the fingers behind your head. If they can't interlace all the way together, you can take them further apart. That's just fine, especially if you're tight in the pecs. And then like we did before, but this time incorporating the elbows and shoulders, lift the sternum, draw the elbows a little wider. Oh, yes, I needed that. Exhale, round any amount, drape the tail, drape the head, draw the elbows closer. Inhale to widen and lift through the heart. Exhale to round and drape in. Elbows draw in. Last one like that. Inhale, reaching the chest up, elbows draw further out and exhale, round in. Now we'll come all the way to where we started. Keep the fingers interlaced. If that doesn't work, then you can take the hands down to the waist. And we're gonna take twisting now side to side. So we're getting into the shoulders and thoracic spine. This is really good if we have been seated for a long time. Really nice to open that upper back shoulder area. We'll be getting to the hips as well. We'll leave no stone unturned. I like to get everywhere in these workouts, even in these quick ones or stretches. Inhale here and exhale, float your arms down. 
roll the shoulders back and down a few more times. And kind of instead of going forward, you might want to go backwards because we've probably been doing a lot of stuff for it. Now come into a child's pose and feel free to pad your knees here. So especially if you feel a little tender in the kneecaps. Knees can be together or separated for this one. Arms draw forward, hips draw back. Take a deep breath in and sigh that out. We're gonna transition in and out of um, downward dog and child's pose and just open the back body a little bit. Palms down, take yourself to all fours. Inhale here, exhale, tuck your toes, go to downward facing dog. Now, my calves happen to be really tight. I did a hard calf workout yesterday, so I am really gonna be gentle here and I don't want you to force your heels to the floor. Deep breath in. Exhale, lower to the knees. Inhale, lift the heart and the hips. Exhale, round the spine into your cat pose. Press into the floor. Inhale, neutral. Exhale, go back to where you started in your child's pose. Through that sequence again. Inhale to all fours. Tuck the toes. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, downward dog. Exhale to all fours. Inhale, heart and hips lift. Exhale, press down into the floor, round the spine. Inhale, neutral. And exhale, child's pose. All right, now from here, we'll go ahead and take our child's pose off center. So we were back in the side body as we started. So walk your hands over to the left. You can stack them and drag your right sitting bone back. Now take a deep breath in to stretch through the right side. And out. Back through center and do that on the other side. You're going slightly diagonal to the right, left hand on top. Inhale fully. And exhale there. Draw back to all fours. My favorite thing to do for people who are on the computer or driving or carrying things is to turn the fingers towards the knees. Now, if this is too much, then you can always come to seated and kind of do like this or um, skip it and just come to a child's pose, <laughs> okay? You can always skip anything you want here. And then you can circle around and see how that feels. You can cat cow and see how that affects the forearms and the hands, or you can just stay right here. If you're not feeling enough sensation, which most of us will be, you can tuck your toes and shift your hips further back to increase that stretch. Let's take a broadening inhale and exhale there. Come off of that, shake that out. Now, if you like to have blocks on either side, when we step forward into a low lunge, feel free to add that now. Take your right foot down, you don't need blocks, okay? Take your right foot forward and come either to the fingertips or to those blocks or whatever else you like to use here. Tuck your back toes, there's a reason for that because I wanna get a toe stretch and I wanna stabilize your patella, your kneecap, down, okay. Breathe here, inhale, lift your heart any amount, open the front of that left hip. Exhale, send the hips back, spread your right set of toes, and now very slowly wag the pelvis side to side. So we have, <laughs> we have three hamstrings on the back of our leg, not just one, so we, with this movement, we get into all of them, a little more than just one. Sole of foot comes down, Hands or palms come down, maybe fingertips, and then take hands or palms, <laughs> that's the same thing. Come to full plank or knees down plank, just for three breaths. Just to create a little bit of core uh, sensation, strength, and blood flow. Again, knees can be down or you can be in absolutely all fours. And go ahead and lower the knees. We'll take now the left foot forward. You can always rise all the way up to do that. Hands to blocks or fingertips to the floor. Shift the pelvis any amount forward until you feel you're getting a stretch in the front of the right hip now. 
tucking the right toes, rolling your shoulders back, and lift the sternum without lifting the chin. Sometimes we think, oh, we're in this back bend because we're lifting the chin, but we wanna find it below that first, even if we lift the chin later. Inhale here, and exhale, shift back into that half Hanumanasana, which is a half split, spread your toes. Don't worry, we're not going to full splits. And do your shift side to side. Ooh, we've, if we've been sitting a long time or haven't stretched in a while, we'll probably all really feel this one. So I'm glad that you showed up. Uh, I feel it definitely for my workout yesterday. And then take the sole of the foot back down, palms come down, lift your back knee, step into plank or knees down plank, breathing here. Now, for those of you who want a little bit more work, you can move this opening the ankle joints and move this forward and back. You can also add on your knees little rotational movements here, drawing the organs towards the spine. We're just taking ourselves off center a little bit and having to use our stabilization uh, a little bit differently, which is nice and good for the brain and the body. Lower the knees, either come to child's pose or you can lift the knees and go into a downward facing dog again. I love to do a bend alternately in the knees, especially if again, calves or hamstrings are pretty tight. Root your palms down, let the contents of your heart spill into your head. Turn your heels in and your toes out. I've got my feet about 10 inches apart, my heels, and I'm gonna press my heart back. So feel free to press your heart more through your arms than you normally would in a classic downward dog to get the outer side of the legs and to stretch around the IT bands. And then little pigeon toed here. So toes rotating in, this comes from the hips, rotating and reaching your heart back a little bit more if you like. Toes straight forward and lower all the way to the knees and come back into your child's pose from here. Take a deep breath in and let it go. We'll come into a seated position. So again, if you want to, we have about four more minutes a little less than that actually. And if you want to prop yourself up, go ahead and do that. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, go ahead and twist to one side, doesn't matter. You can take the opposite hand to opposite knee or just put the fingers forward and behind you. Breathing here in that twist. And if you want to use that hand to kind of allow you to twist a little bit more deeply, feel free, but it's not necessary. And then inhale, reach the torso forward, arms up. Exhale, take that twist to the other side. You're rolling your shoulders back as you're lifting the heart up and you're not trying to crank your head around unnecessarily. Inhale, come all the way through to center. Exhale, hands to the heart, interlace your fingers, press the palms away and round your spine. Take the palms down diagonally towards the floor, drape the head, deep breath in and out. Inhale, come all the way up. If you need to lose the interlacing, let it go. And float the arms down. Come on down onto your back. Hug your knees in towards your belly and rock side to side here. It's just kind of nice to come into contact with the crown sometimes when we're busy in our days. It's nice to go, oh, there it is, there's the crown. Keep your right knee in, extend your left leg. And then we'll switch, left knee in, extend the right leg. And then do a few more switches. And if you want to make this core work, you'll lift your chest and your head. You'll let the lowest portion of the shoulder blades lift as well. If you wanna keep this a little more relaxing, just stay down on the floor with the head and the chest. Okay, so you choose what do you need, back and forth. Both of them are very beneficial. One's not better than the other. Three, two, one. Hug in, lift the chest or not, and exhale, come on down. Soles of the feet down. 
Press into the floor, the feet are about hips distance apart. Let the pelvis lift any amount. If you have a lot of clearance underneath you, you might be able to then tuck the shoulder blades underneath. I like to put my hands on my belly there. If there's somewhere else you like to go with your hands, that's fine. Breathing here. Make sure that you're not just on the outer edges of the feet, but that the inner thighs have a little activity and the big toe ball joint are rooting as well. Inhale and exhale, come all the way down. You can either cross the right ankle on the top of the left knee or cross the knees and hug in whatever will hug in. You can take the ankles or the outside of the feet. Maybe you're interlacing in front of the knee or behind. We're just getting into the glutes a little bit more depending on which pose feels better. I like to rock side to side. And then we'll switch whichever one you chose, whether it was making that four shape, whether it's crossing, maybe you're grabbing the feet, and if you're newer to this pose, you take one arm through the little triangle, the other arm on top in front or behind. Again, movement is useful to get into different areas of the tension. And then hug the knees in and start to shake the legs and then shake them up, 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 up. Kick, let the ankles be really, really slack. This is great for varicose veins and moving the lymphatic system. Three, two, one and done. So that was your break. If you have time, it would probably be really nice to hang out in a little Shavasana before you move into the rest of your day. And if it feels better to have your knees bent with the feet on the floor, you can feel free to do that too. Just taking a moment to settle back in towards that knowingness of your center coming away from the surface, going into the depth. Deep breath in. Sigh out. Of course, if you'd like to stay here a little longer, feel free to stay there longer and pause the video. If all you had were those, you know, 15, 16 minutes, then absolutely you can move back into your day and hopefully you'll feel a little more connected, a little more blood flow and a little less tension. Thank you so much for showing up. Namaste.